Okay, we are right. recording and I am admitting all right now. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, today is May 12, 2021 at 6 p.m. And this is the program and budget uh, committee calling the meeting to order. Sandy, could you please uh, do a roll call, please? Mr. Ken, uh, Linda. Uh, Linda, Bush, this is where you want me to say I'm meeting virtually from Harrison Township, Michigan. Correct. Macomb County. Nick. Nick Shumatero, uh participating remotely from Roseville, Macomb County, Michigan. Ryan. Ryan Fantuzzi, participating remotely in Clinton Township, uh, Macomb County, Michigan. Okay, Phil. Bill Kraft attending remotely in Chesterfield Township, Macomb County, Michigan. Mark. Mark Kilgore attending remotely from East Point, Macomb County, Michigan. Did Dr. O'Connell join us? I did. Chris O'Connell attending remotely from Romulus, Wayne County, Michigan. Lori. Lori Phillips attending remotely from Macomb, Michigan, Macomb County. Antoinette. Antoinette Wallace attending remotely from Mount Clemens, Macomb County, Michigan. Selena. Selena Schmidt attending remotely from Shelby Township, Michigan, Macomb County. And Donna. Uh, Donna Conjemi attending remotely from Sterling Heights, Macomb County, Michigan. And that is everyone, Ryan. Thank you, Sandy. Mm -hmm. The next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Is there a board member that would like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I can do that, Ryan. Thank so everyone you, will stand. I pledge allegiance to, allegiance. to the flag, the flag. The flag. of the United, United States, States of America. Of America. And to the, and to the republic for which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and, liberty justice, and for justice for all. Thank you, Lori. The next is a reading of the mission statement. Is there a board member that would like to read the mission statement? I can do that too, Ryan. Thank you, Lori. Macomb County Community Mental Health guided by the values, strengths, and informed choices of the people we serve provides quality services which promote recovery, community participation, self-sufficiency, and independence. Thank you. Uh, number three, adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. support, Schmidt. Motion by Nick, support by Selena. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Item four, hearing of the public. This is the opportunity for members of the public to participate in this hearing or in this meeting rather. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak? Good evening, my name is Sherry Turner with Adult Learning Systems. I'm requesting to speak to the committee. Please uh, speak, go on ahead. Is my volume okay? Just gonna make sure. Yes. I love technology, um, but sometimes it fails you. So I just wanna make sure before I start, um, I did write um, a few comments down this evening because I know that the time is very limited. So. Um, again, I want to say um, good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. My name is Sherry Turner. I'm the executive director with Adult Learning Systems Lower Michigan. We are a residential provider here in southeastern Michigan. Our history with Macomb County is very long term. We, it dates back over 30 plus years. Uh, we currently operate 11 licensed residential, specialized residential homes and we'll be opening up a 12th home here in the spring. The uh, past year has been, I would say, um, 
difficult to put into words, extremely challenging for the residential provider care network it is, as it has been with many people in the healthcare industry. The pandemic has created challenges to an already stressed mental health system. The direct care worker staffing crisis has grown to depths that we have never seen before. We are extremely grateful for the state's premium pay increases for the direct care wages, but also know we must advocate for the wage to be a permanent one. You don't have to look very hard or far to see the number of hiring signs out in our local communities. The job of the direct care worker is one that comes with a high level of responsibility and it's getting more and more difficult to find and recruit staff to work in our field. We also see continued changes in the mental health field here in Macomb County as we do across the state, but especially here in Macomb County where the needs of the person seeking services are changing rapidly. The acuity level of the person seeking services currently are not matching the number of high vacancies within the current group home structure within the county. As we work in collaboration with Macomb County staff, the change is one that's going to take time and one that's going to mean an increase in funding to per diems to provide the level of care needed for these high level of needs of the consumers. We also ask that additional crisis management service continue to be looked and funded to provide support to these frontline service frontline workers who during crisis situations have got to have plans in place and a support system to turn to. 911 should not only be the part of the crisis plan, there should be other steps for the staff to take. Further, the per diems of the homes separate from direct care wage pass-throughs have been stagnant for a very long time. As a new provider coming into the home and looking at um, providing services to home and contracts, the rates are much higher than the existing providers who have had age old rates stagnant due to the time of the bidding of a contract. We would ask that you continue to look at consistency and rates throughout your provider network. We as a provider agency are already working as I know many of the staff at Macomb County at the state level to develop actuaries for the different levels of services. Again, tonight, it was difficult to come to you because I thought, what did I really want you to hear and what voice did I want you to hear? And I guess the voice that I'd like you to hear is one of the residential providers that through the pandemic, um, we've band together, we've done everything we could. Um, we've leaned on CMH for services that sometimes we didn't even know what we needed with the pandemic and um, what we saw happening in our homes. And so we appreciate all the efforts, but we know there's a lot of work to get um, to be done. And as a program budget, I would ask that you remember the residential care providers and the needs that we have going forward as you can. And again, I thank you. And those are my opening comments, pending any questions. Thank you, Ms. Turner, for your comment. Is there anyone else from the public wishing to speak? Is there anyone else from the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, uh, moving on to item number five, which is request to approve, subsection A, uh, request to approve the release, rele let me rephrase that, request to approve, release a request RFP for primary, primary clinical providers. Is there a motion? Move to or support, support Schmidt. Motion by Linda, support by Selena. Any discussion? Adam, do you have any discussion on this item? Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna move this over to Christina. She will give you a breakdown of this one. Hi everyone. Um, this item is going on for a request to release the RFP. And when we say these primary clinical providers, what we mean are those front door providers that you may remember um, terms like case management provider, um, outpatient, or um, supports coordination. So they're the primary case holder, the lead on the cases. Those organizations also will have psychiatrists, nurses, peer support specialists. They might have um, uh, special programs such as um, DBT or um, other, uh, what is that, what am I missing there, the term, I'm wanting to say value-based, but evidence-based programs. Um, so they're really all encompassing. They are 
similar to what our direct operated programs offer. Um, we have 18 current uh, providers doing that service line, but we are seeing a need for more. And so we want the opportunity to look out in our community and see who else might want to join our team. Any questions? Selena. So Christina, is this to add to our current providers or is this going to be something in addition to what we already have? We are looking to add new vendors. Okay. Um, so uh, entities that we are not currently contracted with for those service lines. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from board members? Okay, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item 5B, request approved to contract with the attached list of 27 vendors. Uh, motion is in order. So moved, O'Connell. Support Linda Bush. Support, uh, motion by Chris, support by Linda. Uh, any discussion on this? Yeah, this is uh, also going to be Christina. Um, Christina, I'm going to stop my share. So do you want to share your screen? Yeah, did you want me to go over the board action or do you want me to go through the, the details with the slides? I have uh, the, the, we have two things for you guys tonight. So we have the board action to add these 27 vendors, which is a part of the transition with Mark to onboard their vendors. Um, and we did put together a little bit more information to explain that process. So if you want me to go through that now, or if you want me to hold that until the end, I'll just go by what your directions are. And where do you wanna start? I would like to see, how about an overview and then um, go through the rest? Sounds good. You want me to do the PowerPoint that I have for you? Yeah, let's start the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question first, maybe just on the sentence. I'm not, really understanding what the sentence means. So if you could explain it to sure. approve, I know we're talking about contracts, mm -hmm. but there's not a contract isn't in the word. So it's a process you're asking us to approve. Is that what that means? It's really both. So it's 27 vendors. And as I go through this, it'll make a little bit more sense. Um, but we are asking you to approve the ability to contract with them. Now, as I share the slides, you'll see that the contract itself has already been approved through the board and the county. So it's a, a current contract that's in place that they would be receiving. But these 27 vendors are um, those that we have not contracted with before. So it's a boilerplate contract that we have already approved. Correct. Okay. It's the same contract that all the other vendors in the network have. Okay. So, so the rates don't differ. I thought the rates were different on some of these 27. They, these providers would be saving the same rates that they're currently receiving. Thank that they're mm -hmm. receiving, right? Correct. Yes. But the contracts are different from contract to contract. The right. No, the contracts are the same across our whole network. So in our system, we have a boilerplate language that everybody gets, and then we have several attachments. They get an attachment A, which is the, an application, a B, which is applicable to the service line they're being provided, or they're going to provide. So hospitals have one, case management has one, um, occupational therapists have one, and so forth. The um, C is, well, let me grab my folder. So I don't, I think that's the recipient right section. Um, the D is their fee schedule. Um, e is a payer coverage reimbursement. It's really just kind of what um, credential level would be reimbursed mm -hmm. by Medicaid. F is the delegated functions. G is the um, business associates agreement or BAA. H is the QSO, which is the qualified um, service organization. And then everybody also gets a provider disclosure, which they sign. And you guys, I believe, have had to sign that as well as board members. And the offshore attestation, which they have to sign. So all of those documents are the exact same across the whole system. The only piece that's different when you look at 
vendor to vendor or provider to provider, is there attachment D, what codes they might be providing for us and what rates they might be being reimbursed at? So rates are different, could be different. They could be, yes, but we're going to, they're all at the same rate that they're being reimbursed at now. Right, I, I understand that. Okay. All right, do you want me to go through the slides? Yes, please. Unless, okay. does anyone have any questions before the slides? No, if you could begin the slides, that'd be great. Thank you. Sure. Yep. And let me make sure I have the right screen because I do have two different um, screens showing. And is that doable for you guys? No. Not yet. Oh, there it is. Just started. There you go. There we are. Okay, so you're seeing that. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna share a lot of information, um, probably rather quickly. So at the end, I can absolutely answer any questions that you might have. So our first one is just kind of showing our breakdown. So we have 13 vendors that both MCCMH and Mork are contracted with. So for those 13, this process is almost seamless. They may have no changes to their contract or they might have an addition of an attachment B. And as I just shared, that is applicable to the service line that they might be contracted with. So in that scenario, maybe they're contracted with us for residential and with more for CLS. So all that we would be doing is adding that CLS uh, attachment B. 27 of their providers or their vendors mm -hmm. are not contracted with MCCMH right now. They are only contracted with MORC. So those are the new ones and that's the list that you got on your actual board action request tonight that we wanna contract with them. Christina? And, yep. I'm sorry for cutting you off. Could you, yeah, for our new board members and even mm -hmm. for those that forget sometimes, uh, CLS is Community Living Supports, I believe. And yeah. uh, could you explain what MORC is? Macomb Oakland Regional Center. So okay. MORC or Macomb Oakland Regional Center operates to support mostly Macomb and Oakland counties. They do service other counties, but that, that's their main um, area of business. Okay. And then I just wanted to make one point of clarification so you understand my terms when I'm saying things. Um, vendor is the main entity or the parent entity, and then the providers will fall under the vendor. So the example I always use um, is a hospital system. So when we look at Henry Ford Health System is the vendor, but there's many different providers under Henry Ford because they have many different locations or different levels of care that they might provide from partial hospitalization to inpatient. So just so you can see the difference when we speak to vendors versus providers, those numbers are gonna change. And I wanted to make sure everyone understood those two meanings. Okay. So with our 13 that we are already contracted with for some level of care, and then uh, Mork is as well, the service lines that are gonna be applicable to this transition are community living services, respite services, fiscal intermediary, and then the largest one we'll talk about today is that specialized residential homes. And within this, even though we're already contracted with these vendors, we're gonna add 36 providers to our network. And those are all the residential homes. When we say that the community living services, the respite, the fiscals, those are the duplicate lines that are already contracted with us. So there's no addition because we're already doing that. Does that make sense? So that one's seamless, but those 36 homes are gonna be new to our network. Um, 25 of those homes are located in Macomb and 11 of them are Oakland, uh, located in Oakland County. So then when we look at our 27, and these are the ones that we're not currently contracted with, we're looking at the same service lines, um, specialized res, community living services, or CLS, respite, fiscal intermediaries, and then we're gonna have an addition of family foster care homes. And what those are, they're not organizations or agencies. They are one person who has chosen to allow uh, an adult person with needs live in their personal home and they provide the billable services within the requirements. So they still have to have a state issued LARA license to operate a specialized residential home. It's not even a general residential, it's specialized still, but they are not held to some of the same standards. So this is new for Macomb to contract with. Um, we're gonna do a lot of learning. We're getting some support from Macomb, um, from Morp. We're getting support from these vendors that are actually providing this service. Um, they do a, a wonderful thing. It's very similar to what you would see with a family taking in a foster child, but this is 
permanent. They're living there for as long as that individual wants to live there. So we'll get more into that too. And, and we're gonna have to learn about that a bit too. So you'll have to bear with us on some of those questions about that service line. We might have to go back and find some answers for you. So staying on our 27 vendors that are gonna be new, um, again, the biggest th transition we're gonna have is these specialized residential homes. And in this section, we're gonna have 51 new providers or new homes that we're gonna add. 31 are located in Macomb and 20 are in Oakland. I will tell you when I've got the breakdown of the residents, a small number of people are in the Oakland homes. Um, and then seven are those family foster care homes that I mentioned. I believe that there's one person in each of those seven, there might be two in one of them. So we're serving seven to eight people under those family foster care homes. And then when we look at a total vendor breakdown, again, we have those 13 current vendors. I wanted to share with you that four are profit and nine are nonprofit. Of the 27 that we're going to be adding, or we're asking you tonight to approve us to add, four are profit and 20 are nonprofit. That is a total of 87 new providers or um, residential homes, which just to share with you is really exciting to us because we have seen a need in our system. Um, and so to have the opportunity to have additional beds or homes to serve the population uh, is gonna benefit the county. Um, 56 of those are in Macomb. And as of April, we had 217 people living in those locations. 31 are in Oakland, 32 people as of April living in those locations. And one is um, in Genesee County and one person is there. Um, seven of those, again, are those family foster care, which rolls up into that total. So that 87 includes those seven family foster care. And we have one fiscal intermediary and um, only one person I believe is served with that fiscal. So that's a really small number as well. So where are we at? So with the transition, we did send joint communication with Mark. Um, that went out on March 29th to share with the network what this process is gonna look like, what we're gonna do. Um, we, it was important for both organizations to um, share with the system that this is a joint effort that we are here to support the providers together. On April 29th, um, we held a virtual meeting and we really just allowed the vendors to ask us questions. We had a loose agenda and it was a Q&A so that they could share with us their questions, concerns, things they wanted to learn more about, um, learn who to contact for what needs. Um, so that was a great experience. We got a lot of really good feedback after. We are gonna hold more of those to make sure that the, all of those vendors and providers are supported. On May 5th, all the vendors, as effective May 5th, they had all been added to our electronic medical record. Um, you may have recalled that the name is Focus. So all of them have to go in with a vendor level, a provider level, a fee schedule. Their insurance information will be added to that um, once we have all of that. Contact information, um, NPI numbers, all of the information that we would need to be able to bill and um, conduct services with them. So all of that is ready to go. And effective May 6th, we sent out um, email notification to all of those that we would receive um, documents back from. So we're asking them for their insurance, their W-9, asking them to sign that provider disclosure. So all of those pieces are already in motion with that network. I'm already getting a good amount back. Um, all of the contracts are also built and ready to be sent out pending your approval. I did put down here those pieces that we were talking about before I started. Um, that contract that will be utilized is the one that you would have approved initially in spring of 2019. So this is the contract that's currently in place that we're operating off of. Um, they're all gonna get that standard boilerplate language and um, they were approved by Corporation Council and the county, all of that has already occurred with everything that these vendors are gonna receive. Our next steps is to get that official contract out to those vendors. And then I listed out all of the documents that they're gonna be required to return. I won't read through all of those, but just wanted to do, get you guys to have an idea of what happens. And then we have to get that executed contract in place, which just means to get the signature copy from the provider, get it to Dave, get it to the county office and make sure that all of those pieces are completed as we need them to be and then back to the provider. 
Um, other next steps, more long-term, will be supporting those vendors learning our system and our processes. They've already had to follow all of our policies, even though they were under MORC. Um, have them make sure that they're in line with all of our trainings. Again, that's been a requirement that's on them, but we wanna just kind of handhold them now that they're directly contracted with us and make sure that they are comfortable and understand how to access any required trainings and that they're familiar with what is required of them, giving them access to focused electronic medical record to allow for billing or whatever provider level that they're at, what's appropriate for them to have access to. For example, we require all of our community living support providers to upload their daily notes into the EMR. And so we'll have to make sure they have that level of access to complete that task. We have some target dates down here. June 1st was our target date to bring anybody that was currently contracted with us on board because again, there's no real contract document that might need to change other than uh, perhaps an addition of that attachment B. Um, so those are in motion once we receive and anything back we need from them, then uh, we can start being the um, payer of those services effective June 1st. We have set um, somewhat of a loose or more flexible date of August 2nd to have everybody else, so those 27 over. And then that'll leave us a little cushion because we have to have this completed by September 30th. Just to kind of give you a recap, because that was a lot of numbers and information. We began these efforts on March 29th. Um, we have 27 new vendors we're asking you to approve us to contract with, which is 87 new providers. And um, we did do the virtual meeting to allow for collaboration um, between the organizations. The documents are already in motion and requested from the vendors, at least what we can get before their formal contract is provided. And we are on track with our targeted completion dates. And then just to acknowledge, it's been a lot of work, but we have a lot of wonderful team members that are all working together to make this successful. So I'm really appreciative of all the divisions that are helping out. So what can I answer Christina. for you? Uh, Selena. Christina, I understand that this is not, we're not negotiating any rates, that this is just a contract to get them into, onto our vendor list. With that being said, what we're paying them, is it similar to what our existing vendors are being paid? Or are we going to see a discrepancy on what the new ones are being paid versus what our existing ones were? I would say they are right in line with what our okay. current vendors are being paid. You're always going to see some a little above, mm -hmm. some a little below. Um, but we, I think we will be paying um, equal to what the rest of the system is being paid. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nick. Yeah, uh, Christina, the first question I think I know the answer to, but just for the record, uh, all of these uh, contracts are with people who are not in current contract disputes or violation with Mork's contract? Correct. Okay. And, and just kind of fill me in on it. It, 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 it. I think it came to all of our attention because of the remarks made by our public speaker earlier. Why are there different rates between uh, different providers because they're offering different services or because- so the of Yeah, the residential rates are different. And um, I, I hate when people say this, so I apologize in advance for saying it, but some of these things were set in place, the rates were in place before um, that would have been under my purview. So I can't speak to exactly why every rate um, for the residential network is where it's at today. Um, but they were set up to be different rates. And um, I believe that the majority were put in place for the demographic that was in the home at the time that the rate was set. And then as people have moved throughout the system, transitioned between homes or left the residential network to live independently, or we no longer serve them, the rates might not be meeting the needs of the system because they're not as applicable to the, the demographic that was there when they developed that rate. Um, so that does cause a lot of struggle for the providers if they had a lower needs home, but now they're taking higher needs people for us or vice versa. You know, maybe we, they had higher needs people and those people have transitioned, are no longer with us and they're taking on lower needs people. Um, so a goal of our system 
is to really go out and it's already in motion. I don't know if I'm you know, jumping ahead to talk too much about how we can look at building a rate structure that really supports the level of care that would um, be for each person. Um, so there's some tools in place that we're reviewing and going over and how can we Im implement that. Um, it would be very difficult for us to do that right now as we know we have this strict deadline. Um, and so the goal was let's just get them under contract and then we will work on that with this system and then the rest of the network to make sure that the rates are appropriate and meet the needs of the provider. Um, I fully support Sherry and her comments. I will say that they're a wonderful provider. They are always stepping up to the plate when we need something. I can call Sherry and get her directly at any time. Um, so we really enjoy working with adult learning systems and um, they have some homes that might have some lower rates and, and I can't speak to every rate. She has a lot of homes, so I don't know every rate in every home off the top of my head, but she's accurate in that some are not meeting the needs. So the intent, uh, obviously we're not gonna do it now because uh, this affects not just the ones we're moving over for mm -hmm. more than all of our providers. The intent is to have a rate structure that parallels the acuity level of uh, the residents. Absolutely, yes. And, and we're working on trying to figure out how to get there. Yes. Dave and Adam have brought some great ideas and tools to us. And so it's how can we get that done and organized and implemented? So That's I feel great. strongly that we will be able to accomplish that. Great, thank you, Christine. Yeah. Any other questions? Donna? Yes, here. Um, it sounds like from your presentation that some of these um, facilities are already filled. You know, there's already residents that are in them. Do we have any idea how much this would open up um, vacant rooms for Macomb County residents? I don't have the vacancy number, but I can ask all of those vendors to report that as they start to submit their documents. One thing that we do with our directly contracted residential network is we have what we call a data sheet that they submit to us monthly so that we can see um, the number of current individuals in the home and the um, anything special in that home that they're providing, if the home um, has a, a staircase or anything like that, and then the vacancies. So these um, vendors will start to ask them to do that as well. And we ask that that's submitted monthly so that on, at as much real time as we can get, we know what we have available in the network. Yeah, that, that would be really um, a great opportunity because I know there's much needed opportunity for our residents. Thank you. Yeah, and it's an opportunity for those providers also to grow and to, you know, as we get to know them and they get to know us, um, you know, even the one that I mentioned in Genesee, I spoke with them on the phone a few weeks ago and they have a really cool program. I'm really excited to start talking with them and working with them. They offer a lot of enhanced supports which is what we're starting to see that we really need. So I think that it, this is really gonna enhance our system. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we're moving. To I have a comment, Ryan. Thank you, Christina. Mm -hmm. This is an excellent report and uh, pulled in a lot of my uh, questions. Thanks. Oh, good. Thank you. And if you guys a lot of, need to, tell a lot of hard work went into this transition, so I appreciate it. We have some amazing um, team members. Two of my newest staff actually have done the majority of the more, we have to say paperwork, right, even though it's all electronic now, but they've really done fantastic. Um, so I'm so grateful for them. Um, and if, if it's something that you guys are interested in, we could do one of the board work sessions that we had done previously where we meet maybe for an hour and I can keep you updated on to where we're at. I do have a large spreadsheet with pinpointing every single thing we're doing and dates and who's involved and so forth. I think that might be a little overwhelming or busy for you to look at, but um, just so you know, you know, behind the scenes, there is a, a large guide and if there's anything more that I can offer or share with you, or if you want to meet and do one of the work group sessions, I'm happy to do that with you. Uh, Ryan, I have one other question. Sure. Will, uh, Christina, will these come back? This is um, not clear to me. Will these come back before the board as contracts for approval in the normal process? Yes. They will. So right. that's one unfortunate thing for this group is they're going to do this contract. If you approve this tonight, 
um, we will send them these this week and then they're going to have to do it, do this again for the 10 one contract. Um, we've made some changes to that contract. It's currently um, with Corporation Council getting final approval. And so we're hoping to bring that to you. Um, I was hoping this month I would get it to you and maybe there's still an opportunity to get it to full board. If not, you'll be seeing that next month. Um, so they'll have to actually do two. But the nice thing for them is the majority of the documents are going to be the same, the same W and W9, the same provider disclosure. You know, the provider profile app is oh, we're making very, very minor changes like spacing issues and things like that. Um, so hopefully they can just resubmit the majority and um, update their signature on the new boilerplate language. Uh, I didn't mean for next year. I meant this this go round to bring these into the fold in oh, home. Will we see contracts again? No, if you would, this is the request tonight to say, can I contract with these 27 off the current um, boilerplate and contract language that we have? So as they're signing them, we would not bring them back in front of you. Um, that's the list that you have attached to your board action. So no, you would not see them again. This is our request for approval with those at this time. So it would be a year from now before a year from when you sign them that they would be brought back before us? No, they would be brought back for the 10-1 group. But I think that okay. Linda was saying, will we see them again before the 10-1? And that right. way everybody- I meant in the general them. format, the way we usually see contracts mm -hmm. is being suspended for these 27 people. Our, our, our uh, process is being suspended. I'm sorry, Linda, if I'm not answering correctly. Um, your the board process. process, the way we generally approve contracts, they come before us as a contract that I think has gone through that the executive's great. office. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure of that process, but um, so this is just it. We we will not uh, these well, these contracts haven't really one. been written, and we won't approve it. Well, you already approved this contract. This one you approved. Um, it's already the one in place. So the contract was approved in. Uh, what did I have on there? The um, spring, of spring of 2019. So you did already do the that. Boilerplate. The boilerplate. The yeah. boilerplate. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that already happened for the documents, the physical contract they're going to receive. That part has already occurred. I, I think what Linda's asking, Christina, is even though we have the boilerplate, maybe I'm mishearing Linda, but while we have the boilerplate, Will the individual contracts with the specific vendors, even though they're boilerplate, be brought to the board for final approval? Is that the intention? No, that would not be the intention. If we want that, we can do that, but that's not um, something that we've normally done. So we would just want, we need to get your direction on how you want to receive those. Okay. So, for tonight, so this doesn't deviate from what we normally do. I thought um, it was presented as a blanket approval and I didn't know what that meant, but, um, uh, so you, okay. Yeah. I'm bringing these two in the same format that I would have before the difference is you already approved the boilerplate two years ago. So it feels a little different. Um, and we can resend you the boilerplate. I, um, I have that. I can, I know that there were some emails going around. I can just attach it to that if you want to see the current boilerplate that they would be receiving or any of the attachments, whatever you'd like to see, I can send along. So, you know, I think that would be helpful, especially for everybody that's new that wasn't part of that original work group to help develop those boilerplate contracts. Okay, yeah. You guys want to see any of the other attachments? Or right, let me pull that list back up to see if they're... And um, Don, well, this is just all the submitted Nick, documents. I'm sorry. I see Nick as well. Yeah, I was just going to say, Christina, as as you're doing that, the changes that you're proposing for October one. Uh, as soon as you've got those, you'll distribute those around as well. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Donna, are you all set? Yes. Okay. Did you say Lynn? Yes. Uh, Christina, just a clarifying question here. Mm -hmm. um, once this is complete, then will the this will be it in terms of Mork that this is a final transition of everything over to us for direct contracts. There's no other vendors that would need to be added or providers. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. 
And so tonight, the motion, thing, I'm sorry, go ahead. And the motion for tonight is just to move this to full board. Yes. Okay. All right. A any other questions to move this to full board? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Uh, item number six, receive and file. Uh, this is of the committee list. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? Mr. Chair, we missed item C. Oh, did I miss C? Yes, <laughs> uh, thank you. Well, 5C, uh, to approve, to contract with services to enhance potential step and to expand the current contract with New Horizons for supportive environment employment services effective June 1st, 2021 through September 30, 2021. I'm looking for a motion to approve. So moved, O'Connell. Support, Schmidt. Yep. Motion by Chris, support, Selena. And this one will be uh, Christina again. You're gonna listen to me all night, guys, so. <laughs> <laughs> This one is a result of the RFP or request for proposal um, for support and employment services that you all did approve for us to release. And um, these are the two providers or vendors that we want to contract with. Um, and just kind of to explain to what you might see in your board of action request, New Horizons is already contracted with us, um, but they were interested in ensuring that they could provide that evidence-based level of support and employment services. Um, I am not an expert in the evidence base, so please don't ask me specific questions about that, but um, we will jot down whatever else you might need to know about that portion and get those answers to you, um, but both of them will provide both the types of services for those, so we're excited um, for the opportunity to work with STEP and just to continue to work with New Horizons and expand with them. Any questions? No? I, I have a question, Christina. Okay. Uh, how did we, how many uh, providers submitted RFPs? Three. Three. And how did we, uh, I, I don't need an answer now, but maybe for the full board session, how did uh, we determine that these were the best, uh, the best two? Well, we have a scoring grid. And so um, we give standards, we give them the requirements that they have to submit. And we tell them in the request for proposal how we're going to score them. So we're going to look at cost. We're going to look at their level of experience and so forth. Um, and so then their scoring grid matches that. And so then we are just scoring those. There is a procurement committee so that it, it can't be biased. It's not just one or two of us um, to that effect. And then the total score. Okay. And these were the two highest scoring. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any other questions? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, now item six, uh, receive and file. Uh, is there a motion to receive and file the committee report or the committee uh, assignments? So I, although I'm not sure where the motion by Nick. Is there a support? Support, Philip. Support by Lori. I was going to say, Ryan, I'm not sure whether this is receive and file or refer to the full board because it technically goes to the full board under the bylaws for approval. It's kind of a formality, but. Are you saying, bylaws. Nick, we don't, need a, we don't need a vote because it's going to full board anyway? No, I think we need a vote to recommend approval by the full board and send it to the full board. Okay, so the motion would be to recommend approval to the full board, to send this to the full board. I think that would, is that your motion, Nick? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that it matters. I mean, technically the full board has, uh, will uh, adopts Phil's recommend, the chairman's recommendation, and I don't see any reason why I wouldn't, but they usually do anyways. It's more of a formality, but it's technically what the bylaws require. I see Phil's hands up. Phil? I just wanted to speak real quick. Yeah, moving it to the full board is good so we can finalize it officially. 
And I just wanted to thank all the board members for making it rather easy. But in the next two weeks, if you see something that you would like changed, um, if you want to be added to every committee, let me know um, before full board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Phil. All right, any other comments? Um, then I'm looking for a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item seven, resolutions. Are there any resolutions? I don't think so. Or are there are there any resolutions, Adam? I don't see any in the packet. So today, no. Okay. Item eight, other possible agenda items. Oh, this is for Richard. Uh, A, CFO update, February 2021 financials. Are you sure working? Maybe. Maybe. I can hear you, Richard. Are you able to see my screen okay? Yes. Excellent. Uh, just a quick highlight. So um, this is the February monthly finance report that um, I'm bringing forward actually from April's board meeting. I was a little bit delayed due to some um, time off that was unanticipated for family medical. So we will get back to our regularly scheduled finance reports. March finance report will come uh, at the regular full board meeting. Just a couple of quick highlights. Um, in terms of revenue and el eligibility, our revenue continues to be above prior year, which is expected. Um, and our eligibility continues to grow um, compared to prior year and even month over month. And again, a lot of that eligibility has to do with the um, current policy that we're not, the state of Michigan is not allowed to let eligibles for the Medicaid program to fall off of Medicaid uh, as we move forward. So revenue continues to stay high for that reason. At this point in time, we anticipate that that policy will likely stay in place for the remainder of the calendar year. And so our revenue will continue to trend above um, what we had projected for the year. So that's good from a financial stability standpoint. Just got to keep in mind that that is not going to be a forever thing. So uh, at some point in the future, when we have more information, we'll bring that to the, to the board to anticipate what our new levels of revenue would be anticipated um, going forward. Looking at some of the comparatives, our cash uh, continues to be significantly higher than prior year. A big part of that has to do with, um, again, all of this additional revenue that we're receiving that was not anticipated in the budget. Um, and some of that um, has to do with um, the demand of services, uh, which we anticipate the demand will increase, but not at the same rate that the revenue and the eligibility has increased. So that continues. Um, liabilities continue to be high compared to prior year and again that has to do with timing and our expectation that um, a portion of this revenue is potentially going to have to go back to the state of Michigan so we do have the requirement especially for the DCW related payments um, that if it's not all spent that does have to be given back uh, with the, the strings that have been attached to that money uh, by the legislature. All that being said, we do anticipate um, ending the year in a very strong net position. So that projection continues to be strong. Um, I'm looking at the income statement side. Again, all the same type of story. Revenue is projecting to be significantly higher than prior year due to the increased in increase in eligibility and the increase in the rates we get paid. So approximately $35 million in reserves at the end of the year. So again, good, good news compared to where we've been the past couple of years. The rest of the numbers really are just the same numbers um, that are in the charts. But again, 
um, in a, a slightly different format for those that like to see it. Um, it's set up in a more traditional financial statement format for both uh, the balance sheet and the income statement. And then we do have at the back of the packet, the top 10 mental health providers and the top 10 substance use disorder providers, um, just for reference for the board. And then a list of the services that they each provide. So in summary, strong financial performance again this year, um, and we'll keep you updated as um, we get more information about what's happening at both the federal and the state levels. Thank you, Richard. Are there any questions? Seeing no questions, uh, could someone make a motion to receive and file? So moved. Support Schmidt. Motion by Nick, support by Selena. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion's passed. Uh, COO update. Yes, good evening, everyone. I wanted to uh, give you a couple updates here today. Um, first off, just a, an update on a project that we took on about uh, approximately a year ago. Um, we started a uh, update to our customer service department and uh, we, had, we wanted to address a couple issues that were being reported to us. We uh, were hearing that people were having difficulty getting a hold of a live person when they first called in. Um, members having multiple numbers to go through, and we didn't have a really good accurate measure of how we were doing uh, through our customer services, if people were able to get through, how long they were waiting on hold. So we wanted to get a, a better, um, you know, better hold on all those areas. So we put together a, a project and we determined that the, the best place to start would be to uh, hire a customer service director. Uh, we wanted to pull together a unified number uh, and then to publish that number. We wanted to set some metrics for our call center based on accepted industry standards, uh, create a customer service training, not only for the new customer service team, but also for the whole organization. And then we also uh, needed to determine the appropriate size of the call center, um, the customer service team, and how they would handle the volume of calls. So our progress so far up to now has been uh, with the director. She was uh, hired on November 2nd of 2020, and she assumed responsibility for the customer service department back on March 1st. We have uh, determined the, the proper number to go through. It's the 855 number, and we have been publishing that. It's on our website. Uh, it's gonna be on our van that will be going out. Um, so that's the, the main number that we give out to our customers. We have created some call center metrics. Uh, we've done this based on some research of the industry, uh, also through some of our My Health Link standards and some of our contractual standards. The areas that we're currently measuring are service level, which is the amount of calls that are answered within a, uh, the, the percentage of calls that are answered within a certain amount of time. We set this at 90% uh, of our calls being answered within 30 seconds. We are currently at 81% of calls being able to answer uh, within 30 seconds, and that is a three-month high for us. Uh, the, we also set an abandonment rate at 5%. So abandonment rate is the amount of callers who terminate the call when they've been waiting on hold. The industry standard is uh, 5%. Uh, so we set it at that, and we are currently meeting the benchmark. Um, we are under 5%, we're at, I think, like 5.3, 5. I'm sorry, 4.3, 4.4%. So we are under the benchmark for that area, which is good news. The average speed to answer, uh, we set that at 30 seconds. We are at about a minute for that. So it's an area that we're uh, working to improve. And we also set a benchmark for requeues uh, at 10 per month per staff. Um, and a requeue is if a call comes into the call center, it goes to... Um, John Doe uh, operator. And if that operator passes that on that call, let's it go to the next person that's counted as a requeue. And that's really a measure of the, you know, the amount of times a person might go around to the various operators. Uh, we want to reduce that as much as possible. Um, and actually some really good news here for last month, we had uh, two of the staff that were under that, that metric. Uh, and overall, our numbers have been improving in there. A couple other areas we measure are also the average handling time, which is currently about four minutes. So each caller that comes in, it takes about four minutes to resolve their call. And we also look at the delay to abandonment. So uh, callers in general will wait four minutes before uh, abandoning the call. That's important because you want to 
assure that someone's not waiting on hold too long and then it leading to an increased and an abandonment. We also, as I mentioned, uh, needed to look at how big the department should be. We were able to find some resources online that uh, led us to, if you have um, 5,000 calls per month, which is what we do for the customer service department, and you set your, your um, service level at 90% for 30 seconds, you need about seven to nine staff to handle that volume of calls. Currently, we have five staff in that department. Uh, we are continuing to, we're continuing to uh, interview and hire, and we also have two staff in plan to transition over. So within, by June, that should give us our two. Uh, at the end of June, they'll be done with their training. And then we would still like to get to nine um, just to make sure that things are, are really going smoothly and we have a really good customer experience. Um, also, as I mentioned, the customer service training, this has been created by the, the director of customer service, Chanel. Uh, Linda actually took the customer service training. Uh, I've taken it as well. We made it a requirement for all our staff to take it. Um, all the staff who transitioned from triage to customer service have taken it. And we have uh, given a big focus to all our front desk staff uh, taking this training and, and really living by the, the, the customer service goals that we have in there. Some of the future goals that we have for the department, as I mentioned, this is a one-year initiative that we have through our, our um, strategic plan. We have the uh, goals of continuation of hiring to get us to the nine staff that we're looking for. Uh, we have continued organizational training and monitoring on customer service standards. Uh, really, while we are monitoring heavily on our customer service team, we want to move to a model where we're modeling, uh, where we're reviewing anyone who answers the phone, making sure that they are using the script that we have, that they're having good interactions with um, the people who call in and that uh, everyone's getting their needs met. They're not waiting on hold too long. We also wanna look at more cross training of staff. We wanna do some crisis training for the customer service staff so they uh, can better handle all calls that come in. Uh, we had a pretty interesting meeting earlier this week um, about a live chat. So I'm sure everyone on here has used live chat on some website. Uh, our current phone vendor has that feature um, and they demonstrated it to us. And we think this will be a good way to uh, give callers a different option. So if there's a high call time um, or a long wait time, then they have just a really simple question. They could possibly go to the website and go through live chat and get that question answered and not have to go into the, the queue of, of phone calls. So um, we're looking at how we can integrate that and I'm hoping to bring some more detail on that to you within uh, a month or so. And uh, the last piece that we're looking at here is uh, looking at potentially moving to a seven day a week call center. We are currently a, a five day a week call center with some um, after hours and some weekend coverage. So we're looking at the possibility of making that seven days to make it a really good experience for the people who are calling in. So that is the update, a lot of exciting work. Um, people have really bought into it and really happy uh, with where we're at and where we're, uh, we're gonna continue to go. So. Um, can I answer any questions about customer service? Are there any questions? I, thank you, Adam. I, we, I just have a few clarifying questions. Sure. We have yeah. five customer service reps currently. Is that, the, and we're looking to get seven. We ultimately want nine. We ultimately want nine. We have uh, two more who will be coming on in mid June and then they'll be going through training and then we should have them ready to go by the end of June. Yeah, and we'll be hiring for two more. And right now our average time to answer call is one minute, but you said the, the average is 30 seconds. So our um, benchmark is 30 seconds. We set a benchmark at 30 seconds to answer the calls and we're at about a minute. Okay, when we bring on these two staff, what, do we have an expectation of what that number will go down to? I'm. A, I'm hopeful that with the seven, when we get them trained and fully operational, that that'll pull that number within the benchmark that we have. And I'm hopeful that it'll also pull our service level uh, from the 81% to the 90%. Okay, and are we looking to do nine now? What are, is there, are we waiting for, are, are we waiting? We, if we're, we're actively interviewing. Um, okay. So if we found two people next week, we would definitely bring them in. So yeah, there's no, we, we've been doing hiring uh, or doing interviewing and, um, you know, it's, we're really looking for someone who has that uh, customer service experience, that really good interaction with, with people. 
Um, so it's, yeah, there, there is definitely a certain type of person that we're looking for that can be uh, a good, good person on that team. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Ryan? Yes. I'd like to make a comment that the training was really excellent. It was very well written. Uh, I understand staff had a, had a big role in the um, actual uh, wording of the training, and it was very in keeping with our mission and uh, uh, emphasized respect and um, I think would be very, very beneficial to anyone who uh, was able to um, be trained with it. Well, when did you go to the training, Linda? It was done on, was it still Relias, Adam, that yeah. I did Relias? Yep. Yeah. Yep, still Relias. So anyone who has a Relias account can take it or I could even uh, send you the training slides if that would be helpful. So yeah, if anyone- Oh, could, could you send the slides? Yeah, I can see the slides. Yeah, I'll get those out. Thank you, man. All right, any other comments or questions? Selena? You know, Adam, I really appreciate um, you guys taking the time to train the folks that you're bringing on to answer these calls on how to process some of the things they may be encountering. Um, you know, we, we forget that piece a lot of times, and it is really important for them to be able to have some type of outlet where they can then process some of the stories that they're hearing or, or you know, the calls, callers that they're encountering. So I really appreciate you guys taking that into consideration and making sure the associates are going to have some type of training there. Yeah, it's, uh, they do the initial training. It's, it's ongoing training. And one piece that uh, Chanel has implemented, which I really like, is she does, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's like a blind monitoring. So our system has the ability where she can go in and she can pick up the phone and the, the staff can't hear a click or anything. It's just, they would never know. And she has a monitoring sheet that she fills out. And then she uses that as a coaching opportunity uh, later on with the staff. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's actively implementing that. And uh, we're, we're, we're seeing that as another good measure of, uh, you know, the quality of how staff is doing on the calls. Excellent. Th thank you, Adam. A any other comments or questions? So I got one more thing to share if uh, no other questions on the customer I, service. I, I just jogged my memory real quick, Adam. When are we going to the seven day? When do you anticipate going from five days to seven days? So we're looking at possibly October 1st. Um, and part of this is because of a My Health Link requirement. Uh, My Health Link requires that effective October, let's see, it's October till the end of March that you have a uh, 20, not 24 seven, eight to eight, seven day a week uh, call center. Um, we've been able to do this, like I mentioned, with, with on-call and some other coverage. Um, so for this coming uh, October, we're going to be just doing a, a deeper dive on the call volume on the weekends to see if it would be beneficial um, to really just staff that to see if the, the call volume would support having a staff in there and seeing if it would be beneficial to, to all of our members. So we would meet, um, it would meet a couple things. It would meet a requirement through my health link, and it would be you know, helpful for the people who are trying to get in on the weekend. Excellent. All right. Mo, uh, second thing. What would, uh... Second thing. I wanted to share a quick CCBHC update for you. Um, you Dave's talked a lot about CCBHC. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the amount of people that we have in the program. Um, and we actually just passed uh, 1,000 individuals in the program. Uh, we are actually pretty close to 1,100. Uh, our goal for the first year is 1,500. So this is, uh, this is really good news. We're, we're really close to the one-year goal. Um, I don't see any problem with meeting that goal and with getting our, our two-year goal of the 3,000. Uh, so our, we've really been doing a lot of work and identifying these individuals. And uh, now we're moving on to more of it, the assessments and the vitals and making sure that we're measuring the outcomes and uh, tracking those outcomes better. So just wanted to give you a real quick update on, on how CCBHC is going and we're making some, uh, some big strides there. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Lori. Yeah, I thought too um, that that would be another great workshop for us as board members so that we all, we understand exactly what a CCBHC is and what, where, what it is. Because I know 
I've gone to conferences and I'm definitely gaining understanding of everything. But I think that would be another thing to put on our agenda for uh, one of our board workshops is an explanation and what the plan is and what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. It's an excellent idea, and we'd love to, to host that and, and give you all the information. We've got I some. I love that idea, Lori, too. Uh, yeah. Do we need a motion or anything to put that on the agenda, or could you just put something together, Adam? I, I'm not sure the answer to that question. We absolutely can put something together for you. Um, and I don't know if it would be separate from the normal schedule, but however you all want to do it, let me know and we'll make it happen. Maybe um, just sending out some proposed dates. Uh, maybe Sandy can ask us some dates and, and we can put it on. Um, yeah, we I'll work with Sandy to get some dates together and send them out. Yeah, that's a good start. Is there anything else, Adam? Last thing is uh, Metro Region and dinners tomorrow. Um, I'll be representing as uh, Dave is uh, still out on his vacation. So, um, but yeah, just want to let you guys know that it's happening tomorrow evening. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's it for me. Okay. Uh, motion to receive and file. So moved. Nick. Support O'Connell. A motion by Nick. Support by Chris. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Nick, you are a parliamentarian. Do I need a uh, motion on these other agenda items just to receive and file? What, the reminders? Uh, the other possible agenda item. Oh, I guess the reminders. Yeah. I guess. yeah no, I don't think you need I don't think so either. Okay. Uh, reminder, board members only, revenue spending workshop meeting, Thursday, May 20th, 2021. That's from 8 to 9 a.m. Uh, that's next week, next Thursday. And then uh, there's a full board meeting on uh, the 26th. That is uh, in two weeks. And, uh, oh, no. Yeah, that's in two weeks. And then um, the Policy and Legislative Affairs Committee to be determined. It's, uh, if I can, Ryan, Of course. Uh, the Policy and Legislative Affairs Committee is meeting, as I think the committee members have been informed, is scheduled for the 19th, a week from today, at 8 a.m. via Zoom. The principal purpose of that meeting is to recommend to full board, and that's why we push to do it as quickly as possible because we want it for the coming full board, a recommendation on the system redesign issues that are going on in the legislature. Uh, Dave and I are gonna try to, as soon as he gets back, uh, confer on a, on a draft, uh, no, no pride of authorship. Everybody in the committee, please feel free to, to fix it up. Uh, and if other members who are not members of the legislative committee, uh, they obviously will have a chance to weigh in on the language at the full board meeting, but if you want to attend the full board meeting or if you want to offer suggestions, probably the resolution will parallel to a great extent the letter that you've all seen that Dave uh, sent out to the Macomb delegation. This will, of course, go to the full legislature and to the uh, governor and to the state association is what we usually do. So don't hesitate to email me or Sandy or or uh, for information if you want to attend, if you, if you aren't a member. Or if you have ideas, let us know. Thank you, Nick. Uh, item nine, hearing of the public. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak? Uh, Ryan, before you do that, I have one thing under other possible agenda items, please. Okay. I just want to remind everyone, Sandy sent an email, I think today, about the, um, uh, the State Association, the Community Mental Health Association of Michigan, the spring conference, summer conference is June 14th, 15th, and 16th. And I understand Dave is doing a panel presentation workshop on CCBHC, so. Thank you, Linda. You haven't, got, you haven't gotten the email from Sandy, uh, check with her. Thank you, Linda. Is there any other board members with comments? No. What about anyone from the public? Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak? Mm -hmm. 
Seeing none, moving on to item 10, adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Support. <laughs> motion by Linda, support by Nick. All in favor, uh, signify aye. by saying aye. 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 I think you're supposed to say all in favor, signify by uh, clicking on the leave. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> right. That's in the Roberts rules. Good job, board. Ryan. Good job. Yeah. Ryan, good job at your first meeting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. But I do miss Phil, too, because I know Phil's listening. So <laughs> that. Ryan did an excellent job. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night everyone. Night. And motion carries, by the way. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.